Caesar. Yep. Myself, Mod Archie. We've got Mod West. Ooh. Mod um, Wolf. I was going to say your first name. And Mod Rock is on his way, running down the stairs now. Mike's muted. We might have been muted for the beginning. Well, you've probably been here a hundred times, so they you know. probably know what I said. I've not seen anyone um, like this before, though. <laughs> no, the orange man. So we'll explain you in a second a once we get Mod Rock um, in his seat, as he also comes on looking a little bit different as to how he did last stream. <laughs> yeah, it was a last-minute addition. We, uh... So who's this Mod Rock guy? Who appeared to be his evil twin brother. What's your new mod name? Um, Beardless Rock. Whatever they want, really. That's not very creative. Oh, we need to zoom out a little bit on that cam. Like marble. Rocking. We are a bit zoomed in. There you go. You're not in the shot either. It doesn't matter. They can't even see it. The glory of the... Yeah, just leave it there. It's supposed to... Okay, my apologies. That's all right. Didn't realize we got a new setup. Fancy. Yep. I've got some new audio stuff. There he is. Get out. Okay. I skill specs when I was trimming it. Quick introductions one more time, then we'll get into it. Mod Ash. Mod Aiza. Mod Archie, Mod West, Mod Rock, and we have Mod Wolf gathering questions. Please, at Old School RS with any questions you might have. Again, guys, this is, I believe, our second live stream on this channel. So this is our brand new Old School RuneScape Twitch channel. Please do give it a follow if you haven't already. This is where we'll be doing all of our streams. It's not to say we won't still be on the RuneScape Twitch channel occasionally, so don't by any means unfollow that one. But yeah, we're going to be doing um, a lot of our streams going forward on this channel. So there you go. Also, um, if you haven't been tuning in, Mod Ghost has been designing live uh, Verzik, which is the final boss to come from Raids 2, um, which is a massive piece of content we're looking to pull to you guys in the next couple weeks, would you say? Uh, when are we looking to pull week. that? Next week? Yep. Paul should be coming you go. next Thursday. Very exciting stuff. So he's been working on that in the background, and we'll jump over to him um, whenever we see he wants to, really. So maybe every 20 minutes or so, we'll see his progress on that boss. That being said, again, keep those questions coming, guys. And let's get into it. So, you know what, actually, let's do this first. Totally forgot. Why have you shaven your beard and why are you wearing that? Cool. So, as part of a kind of community initiative okay. to try and reinvigorate the community streams to come back, um, I teamed up with Aiza doing um, some live streams that you may have seen previous where we essentially open a thousand of each type of crew scroll and then basically see who has the largest bank value at the end of it. Whoever has the largest bank value won a point for that crew scroll basically with the final being at Game Blast and the idea was whoever lost the most committed the forfeit which for me was losing my beard. For Mod Aiza it was to dress up as Goku. Um, the last one did have a slight tweak to it where if either myself or Mariza got ranger boots, then we also had to get our legs waxed. Yeah, but that was before you told me you don't have any leg hair though. And well, I don't anymore. Covered, so yeah. So yeah, I, there are hairless patches on our legs now as well. I, I would advise going back and watching. That was a very good part of the uh, <laughs> it was good. Game Blast stream. So ultimately with my forfeit, the reason why I'm wearing it now, and obviously it's not a Game Blast, is that it, we had like uh, donation goals. So if it was like 500 pound raise in an hour, I'd wear it for a few hours. If it was a thousand pound raise in an hour, I'd wear it for the rest of Game Blast, so full 24 hours. And then for another thousand pound after that, I'd wear it for a work day. Uh, and I think in total we raised something like three and a half thousand pound in our segment, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. Huge props to, to you guys, the community. Um, and as a result, here I am, all day today, dressed up as Goku, and I thought, what better a day to do it than on the Q&A? And you're going to do the Super Saiyan thing, right? No, I'm definitely yeah. not. <laughs> Come on. So yeah, the t-shirt's a little bit off. I've got the same colour as these bands, but I forgot it. Unfortunately, it's it's actually in the wash. Um, oh, if he's not wearing the full outfit, he has to wear so, it again, I think. No, no. Yeah, I agree. Let's move on. Question also, I thought it was the entire day, but he's only just put it on for the Q&A. Oh, just no, I've had it know. on for ages. <laughs> nope. No, he didn't. Yeah, I did. I did. Um... Also, yeah, I think that you just wanted to wear that, and I think you just wanted to shave your beard. And I also think you just you both just wanted to wax your legs. So <laughs> there weren't really any forfeits here. My legs here. have never been smoother. 
Well, either way, we've uh, we raised good money for a good yeah. cause. So, um, Game Blast was fantastic. Um, so many amazing things to happen in that. We could probably sit here and talk about it for ages. We raised uh, ninety-one thousand pounds in the stream, over a hundred thousand pounds now. Afterwards, people are still donating. Such an incredible cause. But um, yeah, we're here to answer questions and chat. So, first question: Make emblems drop on death from revs. This was tweeted a bajillion times from Skillspecs. Yeah, thanks, Skillspecs. Seen it. We're, um, it's been raised quite a few times and wait for the dev blog to come out tomorrow and see what's in there. Okay. All right. Interesting. Um, let's get through I, I, some in sorry, the chat. On that point, actually, I might as well just touch on it. So tomorrow, it, I mean, it will be changed that tomorrow they are lost on death. Yay! So the bracelet of Ethereum currently cannot be protected. So it's always lost on death. Meaning that if you're taking that bracelet, you're always guaranteed, uh, you know, like 42k, I think it's out value is, um, as a risk. And the relics slash statuettes were replacing the, you know, infamous 100d plate and d skirt drops, which obviously can't be kept on death. So we're kind of just actually putting back in the mechanic that already existed. Um, yeah. So there appears to be a slight buzz with the audio. Sorry, guys. We're going to work on fixing that in a second. Um, Rock, do you want to clip your mic on? Well, I was trying to clip it on, and then it was just going all wonky, so I just left it. But. Yours is the only one that stands out as not being worn, so maybe it's acting up. There you go. Saved, saved, saved. The acoustics around his chin have changed in ways we haven't quite adjusted <laughs> to yet. Yes. Yeah. I now have the second best beard in the old school team. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really isn't a beard, it's just I haven't uh, bothered to shave in a week. I think Mod Ghost holds that title. <laughs> oh, I, oh, well, actually, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, fight, 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 <laughs> we can we can compete. We can compete for second place. Yeah. Oh. No. Sorry, just to touch on the subject of revs. So I've got revs on my mind. Okay. Um, there are two other changes that are going to be coming out tomorrow. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about them, but one of them is looking at balancing in terms of loot, and the other is is making it just a slight amount riskier for people if you're not going in with the with the bracelet of ethereum especially when there's a larger amount of players so just have to wait and see what that entails in the dev blog i think it's, it might be my mic buzzing so i can just switch to this one if that if that works it's not your mic. oh you've dropped the button <laughs> no. all right we're gonna break everything thank you okay let's get into the questions then um turn your mic down Okay, I'll hold it further away. Here we go. Can we please repair the statues in Falador and Lumbridge after Garden of Tranquility for some construction experience? Maybe add a mini quest where the Duke of Lumbridge wants you to repair it. It would seem reasonable if you bring your own marble block, maybe. Them's not cheap. Sure. This was surprisingly a uh, top upvoted comment this week. So. It's come up a lot over the years that people don't like how incomplete the places look. Um, once you've taken the statue out. Like somebody said, you've done the file door improvement, but you haven't put that statue back. Well, no, because you took it. But it's not supposed to get prettier again just because we've redesigned some of the wall kits in the neighbourhood. But um, you know, people do sometimes like a complete looking uh, environment. So sure, let them complete it again for little XP. And if they're bringing a marble block to do it, then that justifies the XP as well. Yeah, I like it. Um, so this is about the time we get a lot of the players who I believe just tuned into the Q&A looking for a mobile update. Oh, we're still getting a buzz, apparently. Ah. Uh, Ooh. Maybe they can hear my conversations. <laughs> I'll put mine on the desk just instead. Yeah. No calling Norway. That's so weird. His phone is next to his mic. That might be causing the, the buzzing. Weird. Take mine out of my pocket as well. Weird alien technology. <laughs> okay. Um, nobody's saying fixed, but also nobody's saying buzz anymore, so we should be good to move on. Well, if we wait until they stop saying words like buzz. Fixed. I see a fixed. Okay. <laughs> and now people are buzzing again, I assume, because <laughs> of course they will. Okay, we're seeing fixed. Here we go. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Um, anyways, again, no update on mobile, sorry to say, and no divine isn't coming to old school, at least that I know of right now. So there's there's those two spams Unless out of the chat. A lollipop. 
Unless it's on oh, yeah, a lollipop. Divine lollipop. <laughs> Is that what it got changed to? A divine lollipop? Yeah. Don't ask. Forever frying band, okay. to be honest. <laughs> Get some divine eggs. Okay, here we go. Next question. Can you remove the confirmation text when claiming daily bone meal from Robin? Can do. Yes. See if it's... Be put in. Wolf says that was pulled to be put in, and now you're asking for it to be removed. That's that's <laughs> insulting. Toggle well, sky. In <laughs> uh, the buzz is still there. Has anyone else got a phone? I have a phone. I have My a phone's phone. on the floor. Is your radioactive costume? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. It might be my hair interfering with the signal. <laughs> Dude. Okay. Thanks, Maz. Carrying miss on. you. <laughs> Stop. Can we just remove the chat? <laughs> um, right. Can examining growing crops show what is grown there? For example, this is a herb patch. The soil has been treated with ultra compost. The patch has a renar seed growing in it. Right now it doesn't tell you what's growing in it. We can't do dynamic examine text to quite that level of um, detail since, especially with herbs, they all use the same location definition. The check option, on the other hand, can give more information than it currently does, which is perhaps what the player was talking about, rather than the examine option. Maybe. Probably. Well, that's a pretty good quote of what the check option would have said. Probably now. Is, is that everybody's phone? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, it, just to say, guys, when we start, when, when, when we ask a question, please understand that not every question is going to appeal to every single player. Um, I appreciate the moving on memes and that, but as soon as we ask something, spamming moving on before we even get through the answer, um, it's, it's not going to do anything. So well, you've asked for it now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Good job, Archie. Anyways, um, some more in the chat. It looks like, can we change the Archaeus spellbook so that you don't have to click on the reanimated head? This one's been asked before, and I think... What did we do with your teasers? Uh, yeah, I, I sort of condensed the, the head spells into three tiers. Or was it four tiers? Mm, well, know. at the moment you have to yeah. click the spell, then click on the item. And it might be the item in your inventory, it might be the item on the ground, so you don't have to put it in your inventory. That's why we made it a uh, click spell on target feature, because if it was a simply a left click thing and you want to click on something on the ground, well, you wouldn't be able to. So you'd have to pick it up first and have inventory space to do so. The thing is, less people are likely to be running around with that spell book, so maybe they don't care. And also, we might be able to have a kind of a right click option that does what this player wants separate from the use on target thing. So it ended up being a bit more complicated to use, but we would be able to make it guess what you want from your inventory and still be able to cast it on things on the ground separately. A right click would be nicer than having to click and then does it automatically switch to the inventory when you click yeah, it? Yeah, just like our thing. I sort of like how it is now. I think it's just making it um, I think we yeah. probably have to look to see what is used more, whether it's cast more on the inventory or on the hand. Can we is use the ob one or? Well, at the moment, there's only the thing for clicking it and then t choosing a target. Um, we never made something that just searches your inventory for something you could possibly have wanted to do it on. P personally, I think if we do add such an option, we make it the left click because I'm mm. really quite sure that's more common. And if you clicked it when you hadn't got a suitable head in your inventory, what the hell, just say so. That's what I was thinking. I just wasn't sure whether we had the space to put that above, like a use op, but obviously we do. Pretty sure we do. Okay. Uh, I think it's time for the reveal. So for those who tuned into the Game Blast stream, you might have found out that Mod Ash's mug, which he just gave away for charity, or is about to give away for charity, sold for a total of 20 it was at 2,850 pounds. So oh, nice. massive well done. Thank you so to the very generous person who bought that. And today he has a grand reveal. Yes. Now, um, as you may have noticed, this mug that we've sold is still here and I'm still sipping from it. Uh, that's not because we've decided to welch on the deal after the player pledged all that money to charity. It's because the player also turned out to have um, won the auction for dinner with some J-Mods. So since we're meeting the person, we may as well just give them the mug in person when that happens. Uh, date to be confirmed. But in the meantime, I'm going to keep drinking out of it if he doesn't mind. I didn't know we were giving that away. <laughs> oh, didn't we? So anyway, so... Uh, with the J-Mods. Yeah, well, I think it was J-Mods of their choice up to X amount. Of up to their, of their choice? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, I wasn't chosen. No. Unbelievable. <laughs> I am Who so was offended. Chosen? There was me you were chosen and Ash Kieran. Kieran. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they might throw in some C some other additional CM for free. Um, but um, so funny. until that uh, goes around, um, yeah, I've still got this mug and no one's contacted me to say stop using their mugs. So um, I hope they don't mind. In the meantime, yeah, I uh, something to drink out of afterwards. You'll see here. We have this squirrel, which represents Mod Maz in her absence. Um, it's, and um, for the stiffening we've been using to keep it upright for all this time uh, is my next mug. Um, it's not quite like the last one. Yeah, see Maz is, if we cut back to the other view, yeah, Maz can't stand up without this mug inserted um, to um, act as a kind of stable base. So, um, uh, yeah, um, oh, okay. That's right. Um, so yeah, here's the new mug. I bought it in America on my honeymoon and um, it's got uh, St. Augustine, Florida written on it. Uh, city I went to. Um, guess I'll debut it. This could go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that last little spot. Just, uh, 
This is so and I haven't washed this in a couple of years. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, my new mug. Cheers. Hey. Should we move on in the chat <laughs> <laughs> and see what Mod West is doing with? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If someone if someone just tuned in, they'd be like, "What is this?" <laughs> well, they'd have just seen that pouring, then that bloop. It's the tea bags. They always some. Um, yeah. yeah. The sound of the pouring was bang on. Well, it's that microphone. It's well positioned. Yeah. Actually, I saw a don't move on in the chat. That's a first. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Um, it may be considered overpower 4P, 4PKing. <laughs> don't start questions like that. Um, but can the spellbook swap on the magic cape have all the spellbooks as right-click options, like in the player-owned house altar? How many options has it got on it at the moment for other things? Was that the spell book swap on the magic cape? Well, the magic cape itself. I um, think you've got the use, equip, examine, change spell book. And the, the, yeah, and the boost as well. It so one magic seems cape. like there's space for enough more. It would just make it a quicker transition to switch. Um, so for those who don't know, uh, the magic cape can spell book swap, obviously. And with this, you'd be able to quickly cast a tally block, and then in like one tick, you'd be able to switch to a different spell book and throw a barrage almost immediately after. Maybe not one tick, but almost immediately after. Um, but there's a limited amount of times that you can use that. It's really not used a ton, that I've seen at least. Um, it's like what, a five a day that you get to use it? Yeah. Mostly just for like videos and stuff, really, isn't it? I've, I've seen. But maybe more uses outside of PvP, obviously. But it doesn't really look like too many people want that one, so. <laughs> well, it wasn't the most inviting phrasing of a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, next one. Here we go. Um, so far, we've seen two Grandmaster scale quests, sequels to Monkey Madness and Dragon Slayer. If you had to choose another quest line you'd want to conclude with a Grandmaster, what would it be? Ooh. Ooh, good question. Let's, let's go around one by one. I'm going to start. Dra um, 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 Desert Treasure. Now, none of you can say that. You're, the, you're, a, you're Norse. I was going to say Desert Treasure too. Um, a Norse? I think. Sorry. I don't know that word. <laughs> what? I don't know. It's a, it's a word I use for someone that's like annoying, like so nauseating. Like, oh god, it made me sick. Uh, Making up words. So annoying. Yeah, it's this is some sort I of. Like I like the words I use for it. <laughs> um, I'd like to try and do something a bit different. I think we've already got like the, um, or rather, RuneScape obviously has the elf quest to get into Priftonus. Um, we're already working with. Fremnik and Maya Key. Um, I'd like to go down the troll route, I think, carrying on after Ash's next quest. I think the troll storyline is one of the more whimsical, funny ones that we've got. Mm. It certainly is whimsical. Everyone loves my arm. Yeah. Any other quests? So what's the, um, what's the quest where you go in a penguin outfit? Penguin's Cold, Cold, Cold War. Cold War. Oh, that's the one. I would like to see. I had real fun playing that quest. And you get to go around the little, you know, course and you're sliding everywhere and just being a little penguin, it was just different. It was quite fun. Yeah, I, I think RuneScape has at least two or maybe three penguin quests after Gold War. Mm. Yeah, they've got the Hunts for Red Vactuber. They've got Back to the Freezer. And they've got these one where you escape from a prisoner of Warus camp. Not in that order. Uh, I would want... Oh, that's gone. Uh, initially, I wanted to say Imp Catcher, because that'd be funny. But I think. Yeah, with your hand, man. <laughs> Not that hand. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think a slug quest, get like a, another, I think, acolyte armor, that'd be a cool addition to the game. So an upgrade okay. from uh, uh, Proselyte. Slug Menace 3, 2. Which one is the one that gives Snelms? I think you just go into Mortmire. I think you just go into Mortmire and cat kill I, them. I thought they were snails. related to a quest in some way. I guess the Morton quest. I was going to say Snellm expansion. Snellm expansion. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. It's not more fashion scape. So you can like equip the big giant snails you can get from Temple Trekking? Yeah. <laughs> it'd be like a cape, Full wouldn't it? Snail. And you could like crawl into it. <laughs> Ash, did you, have a, did you have a quest you'd like to? Well, 
I happen to know what the developer for Slug Menace intended to do for the rest of his series. And um, last time I mentioned that, it got quite a bit of traction on social media, which is clearly how you design a game. And um, it wasn't a bad story idea he had. Um, so I wouldn't mind pursuing that one. Whether it was Grandmaster or not doesn't really matter to me, but I'd like something where you go up against Mother Malam and um, defeat her differently to pushing a pillar over, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that was a little disappointing, wasn't it? Well, we've now come to about the halfway mark somehow already. Um, so I'm going to look for Mod Ghost to see if he wants us to throw things over to him. Yeah, all right, cool. Let's see how um, Lady Verzik is coming along. So here's Lady the concept made by Mod D Barker um, from the RuneScape team. Um, so today I've just been attempting to model that and just do it justice. Um, this model is partially finished, but you can see I've started making the face already. Um, the community wanted her to have a slightly larger neck, but I'm saving this head and putting it to one side for now, just so I might have gone a bit too far with that. Um, also the body, I've just been modeling kind of like a leotard to go around her. Just to kind of get those shapes going in there. Um, so I'll show you the second sheet of concepts as well. So with her outfit, you can see um, generally like her, her upper thighs are exposed. So uh, what I've done to sort of compensate for that is actually just make it so that this leotard cuts quite far up on her. And then she's got all these layers which come over as well just here in this sort of like long flowing gown that hangs down. So if I do really sort of make a dress for her um, in order to get that to animate correctly, it's going to need to really sort of come down about that length there. Ah, OK. I'm great at changing screen. Yes, yeah, so it's going to need to come down about this length on her down there. And then like kind of like the cut's going to have to, if I just uh, grab this at the bottom just here and scale that in the cut's going to have to kind of come back a bit like that as well, just to kind of hang over her legs, if you can imagine. Then that's all going to have to be animated. So there's a lot of work to go on there, so I'll have to keep posting you updates over uh, the coming few days uh, to show you how it's going on. She has got fingers. I know some people have been asking whether or not the bosses will have fingers. Uh, so <laughs> I'll just answer that question now, get that out of the way. Um, so, yeah, hopefully when you come back to me, I'll, I'll kind of like have her legs sorted out so she'll have anatomical proportions on them correctly. I've still got to do the feet, you can see they're quite blocky. Um, but yeah, generally she's she's going in the right direction now. If you watched the uh, design stream earlier, we had a few funny moments uh, with how she was looking. At, at one point she just looked like a mum from Futurama, which was kind of entertaining, uh, amongst many other characters uh, from popular fiction. Um, so as well as that, I've got um, the Maiden to show you um, from last week. So I'll just uh, run you through uh, the animation style that I'm going to be doing for the Theory of Blood NPCs. Uh, generally in the past, um, I'll just close this animation down and show you the idol. Um, we would have, say, like a, an animation here. This lasts for 120. We tend to work in multiples of 30 when we do animations. And typically something that was um, three, uh, sorry, uh, four multiples of 30 would have 20 frames, five for each 30. Um, to smooth that out, I would then select these frames at the bottom just here, and I would double them so they tween, and then I'd shorten them to a value of three. Try again. There we go. Just click it. And you can see it smooths things out. There's a bit of jerkiness in that, but we can kind of smooth that over anyway. Uh, but for this NPC and for quite a, f a, a lot of other NPCs in uh, Raids 2, it's not going to be about smoothness or the quantity of animation frames that we can actually make. It's going to be more about how we punctuate the animations. And by that, it's best that I sort of demonstrate to explain by what I mean. Uh, what I mean by that. Uh, so we have um, her first frame just here, more or less, when she sort of comes back into this attack. And you can see she swings back up quite far in her blood pool. And now I need her to sort of really punch out. So instead of having lots of frames. I just cut straight to the next frame that I want to, for her to have like a really punchy attack. And you can see I've actually distorted and stretched the arm just there. Um, so 
if I freeze the frame, you can see, wow, that arm is sort of much longer than it needs to be, and it's bending much more than it needs to. But when it's actually animated, as I'll show you in a second, you won't actually get that effect. So again, when the arm fully strikes out, you can see it's lengthened even more and distorted even more. And when she comes back, again, it's sort of lengthened and distorted. And when she strikes back round, you can see I actually break this arm on the way back round. So it's bending in completely the wrong way. And again, you might think that looks really peculiar now, you're sort of showing it frame by frame. But the actual final effect gives you this very sort of snappy attack when it's all played together, which is a really lovely um, animation style, which is utilized in a lot of anime cartoons. And um, for this particular example, I was speaking to the lead um, animator from uh, RuneScape who put me onto a game called Skullgirls. Um, and there's a brilliant YouTube tutorial with the lead animator from Skullgirls that explained these techniques and how to utilize them. Uh, so for uh, Raids 2, this is going to be the animation style that I'll be going for for the characters. Uh, so more to come on this. I hope you enjoyed this uh, sort of behind the scenes look at what we're making for the assets. And uh, we'll give you more from that in design streams probably in a, about another two weeks. Hang on a second. I've got, I've got one question for you before we throw things back to the couch. Yeah, sure. Um, so just for Verzik, the final boss that we're going for here, mm -hmm. can, you, can we talk about um, why, why aren't we going for a very traditional boss-like thing? So, so I think they're asking for something that might be more like looking like a monster rather than a humanoid and maybe like really cool, badass, bloody, um, you know, kind of muscly creature. Um, this is obviously quite a bit drastically different. What's the, the reasoning for that? Um, I suppose the reasoning for it is... Um I suppose I'll, I'll start off first by saying when you actually look at a piece of content, it, it kind of helps if you've established context for that. Um, when you show off individual assets, they're missing a lot of context of the overall content. So in order to establish content for the final boss, we'd need to show you absolutely everything made for Raids 2 as we envision it. Um, so with that disclaimer in place, I'd say that's the first reason. Um, the second reason is she might not always look like that. So she might change into something more monstrous throughout the fight. It all depends how we how we sort of take the NPC. I'm not really sure to start off with uh, how she's going to end up looking. Um, so if there is more of a demand for that from the community, we can definitely go in that direction. Um, so it's not an issue. And as well as that, she's a, a vampire. Um, so generally vampires, especially when they're particularly powerful, are shapeshifters too. So that opens up possibilities for, for multiple forms too. Um, but yeah, I, I could give her crab legs like the Abyssal Sire if, uh, if people really want that. I think she's great the way she is. <laughs> yeah, I think that too. Yeah. Right, thank you. Um, yeah, in, in more or less, it, it completely fits with the story and what we're going for in the lore. And that's obviously important. We can't just throw together a really cool looking boss inspired by bosses existing in our game already or other games. Um, with this, it's exactly what we were looking for that fits with everything that you will you will soon find out about. I don't know if my mic's still on as well. Is it? Can you still hear me? Yeah, um, I was going to say as well, there's going to be lots of that in raids. Um, so I, I don't think we need to do it with every single room. So if people do want those sort of big, imaginative, scary, surreal looking monsters, there definitely will be that in like, plenty of it with raids too. But at the same time, it's nice to have variety and not just have it so that every boss is just some sort of horrific David, David Cronenberg creation. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. I don't think we've leaked how many rooms we're going for, how many bosses we're going for, but there are several. And um, yeah, they, I, I mean, you, you've seen one of them so far. Um, the um, What's the name of the woman? Serafina. Serafina. Um, and obviously this one as well. So that's only two. Okay, are we good to get back onto the questions then? We'll jump back over to you by the end of the stream. Thank you. Can't really clap. Right. Okay, moving on. Cannibal says, can we revisit rewards for mini games? Um, referring to the Omega Barbarian Assault hat, which was, I believe, a combination of all of the rewards in a hat. Um, and just kind of more incentive for people to get involved in the content that took so much work to create. Pendants ones come up from time to time. There's there's also talk, I believe, about yeah, about better armor slash gear slash rewards, whatever you want to call it, that would only have its benefits within the mini game itself. How do you feel about about that as content? 
rewards that help you do the mini game better are only ultimately useful if what you get from doing it better is itself useful outside. Otherwise, the mini game just makes you do it itself more and more and more and more, and ultimately you wonder why you're doing it, and there isn't an answer. It's not. It's something we thought of before. Maybe we did James and Eric. Actually, we thought about adding items which helped you do James and Eric better. Although we did then found that players could do James and Eric just fine without anything like that, and we didn't want to make it even faster, so we didn't go there in the end. Um, it would seem like a strange thing to add to an old established mini game when they want more reasons to go there. I'm not sure the ability to do the mini game itself faster or better is what they're looking for when they suggest more things to draw people to it. Yeah. I Whereas mean, they do, I think, have some suggestions of what we could add to it that would be appealing. Yeah, there have been so many countless ideas for a mini game rewards shop. Um, it's past the pole. Yeah. Also, uh, depending on whatever it is that makes the minigame better for you, thinking about like the Castle Wars bracelet, it's, you know, you'd be very silly to try to play Castle Wars without using that. So anything that we would implement would have to be absolutely necessary going forward for any player, um, which is something that we have to keep in mind, obviously. It shows a level of progression though, within the game itself, within yeah. the minigame. Yeah, now Barbie Assault's doing all right for that because you yeah. level up your roles. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. Other minigames, I think, don't do anything of a sort. Yeah. But I believe I, don't, I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but I believe at one point they, in in RuneScape they made the Castle Wars armors actually useful within Castle Wars itself. Ooh, I didn't even know that. I think I might be remembering that wrong, but I'm pretty sure they did. So I, re I do recall someone. I remember a point where everyone just started wearing the armor, and the actual gold and blue armor was suddenly well worth the time invested. There is one thing that we'd rather like to do to Barbie Assault, um, although it's not going to be a small thing to do. Those icons that appear around your feet, which require that your cape slot be kept empty because that's where the game puts them. I sort of invented a way of doing it without needing you to keep an empty inventory slot. That's what we've got in Clan Wars, where you get a team cape effect without needing to wear a team cape. Um, it's a nasty, nasty hack, but what I do is I change your beard into a special kind of beard with a team cape property applied to it. And that's what we put on you in Clan Wars. And ladies get special invisible beards with team cape properties applied to them. <laughs> so um, uh, it feels topical given everything we've said on this stream about beards lately. <laughs> but we can do the magic beard trick to um, not just do team cape effects, but to also make a, um, well, the icon appear around your feet. That could be just as easily, uh, easy, done via this magic beard trick. And that would let us bring your, well, remove anything regarding the cape slot from it, so Barbarian Assault would no longer have the cape restrictions. You may or may not care, frankly, but it would seem, well, a nice thing to offer. Okay. Um... I see a certain amount of response to me calling it Barbie Assault. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so here's an interesting question. I was speaking to Will Miss It, one of our content creators on YouTube. Um, I believe he primarily focuses on RuneScape 3, and he showed me something in a feature. Um, he said, I believe, one of the JMods made for him. Um, and I was really impressed by it. What it was, was essentially a green screen in-game. By the way, very, very, very friendly guy. I really like him. But... Anyways, um, he had a he had a green screen in the game, and it made the grass bright green, like neon green. And he was able to use that as a green screen for his videos. Is that something that we would be able to offer to our players, the ability to have a green screen in game? I guess. Well, we sort of created the black screen in lead black a hole yeah. for that purpose. If we were able to paint it green instead of black, and have it be a consistent enough green walls and skybox as well as the ground that'd be all right trouble is we have in old school famously no skybox or control over what color the sky is mm -hmm. and our walls and floor may experience rather different dynamic shading mm -hmm. so you might end up with three shades two shades of green and one of black for your green screen i think and whereas by doing it as a simply black blackout there was only one color unfortunately it happens to be very fairly dark black 
I think if we were to um, add a lot of contrast and ambient to the locations, we might be able to get the same effect. Yeah, okay. an experiment, but I don't, I can, I no promises. But well, we you can change the blackout thing on the that's on the disc of returning to um, use your terrain rather than what it currently has, or just change that terrain. Then by all means, go right ahead. It's just simply trying to be a green screen, except that, well, we didn't have much access to the artists back in those years, mm -hmm. and. Um, we figured that the only thing we could do for one single colour would be black. Yeah, that makes sense. Because of the sky. I'm not sure what you've got in mind for that. Very tall walls. Hmm. <laughs> I, I think it was Shawnee that did the green screen along with his um, sky boxes. Up okay, there that he did. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure I was looking at it and it was just the grass um, was just suddenly very near, like neon green and he was just stood on that and using that. But I was Were there no walls around him? Um, don't think so. Hmm. Surely that Anyways. would just remove the, the floor then. Unless he has it angled at a certain... No, the way that it works, the skybox and filters work on RuteScape 3 is that they oh, can make them change green. the different colours uh, and stuff like that so you can make everything like as if you're on a trip and... Green screen, uh, yes right. please, see engineer. See, it would be nice <laughs> for videos, yeah. I think. I like it. Anyways. I think we've also used our green screen for anything here. Maybe we can make like a green screen room in the player and house. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If, if it's not too much effort, I don't want to take you away from anything uh, too important, but if it's a quick one, I think it'd be nice. I think the players found they'd got a green screen, but it was only 8x8, eight eight, and they had to <laughs> eliminate all the surrounding scenery. They might not thank us so much. Yeah, probably not, actually. <laughs> all right, uh, carrying on. Can we see a clue scroll rework similar to RuneScape 3's very recent update where you can collect multiple clue scrolls and caskets of the same tier? They've had this idea many times in the past. Mm. Collecting as many caskets as you can and then opening them at once. I sort of like it because I've found myself on many occasions where I've got a medium clue scroll and then I see a impling go by and I think, oh, yeah. uh, I can't, I'm not going to get a clue scroll from that. But at the same time, I sort of like that limitation because it puts you out, it gets you moving around a lot and doesn't keep you in one location, just gaining like a thousand clue scrolls. But maybe caskets potentially, so people can have lots of openings of them. That but then sounds... what could we do about our amazing community live streams that we put oh, on we YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that's devalues is their their streams. <laughs> In that case, let's go for it. Uh, let's let's talk about. Uh, I don't know if we can talk about additional rewards because it doesn't sound like the idea itself is very favoured. People are um, saying just caskets, a so, bit like a uh, yeah. Let's let's straw pull this winter, one. I think winter Todd crates, if possible. Mod Wolf is going to throw together a straw pull for you, which so we're not going to offer the ability to collect multiple of the same tier clue scroll because just from the sentiment in the chat right now, it's that doesn't seem desired. Um, <laughs> but if we can straw pull the ability to collect multiple of the same tier casket and only the caskets, I think um, we'll Karen, on that. Karen would be very pleased about this because he does a lot of casket juggling. He's done so many clue scrolls, it's insane. How does it work in terms of a casket and when the loot is determined? Is it when you open the casket or is it when you receive um, If we give ourselves quite a few, they don't stack, so they're not... But they, I think they are when you open them. I just them. wondered if, like, say for example, we ever updated something to do with clue scrolls in the future and added a new item and someone had a thousand caskets stored, would they have a chance of rolling the new item? Good question because they could potentially store... We would have to, every time we add to the clue scroll table, I think we'd have to essentially make it a brand new item. So they couldn't come as part of that old... Okay, mm, I see. I think... Sounds about right, yes. Very interesting. We did it before with nests, when we wanted to buff the nests from the mole, and um, rather than having people stockpiling the old ones for a very, very long time, while the update was being polled and developed, we simply introduced a new one so that it only affected nests gathered from the time when the update came out. You're a five million IQ now. You're thinking ahead. Well done. It's the, it's the outfit. Yeah. Are, are saying smart? Not worth it. I didn't, no, they're didn't not, think well, so. Well, they, they act IQ like they're not, not over 9,000. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have a straw poll in the chat. So You're we're over 9,000. Pull the results from that very shortly. But in the meantime, let's grab another one from the iPad. Um, here we are. Can we please take a look at Volcanic Mine? As it stands right now, it's very difficult to gather a team for it, which is really unfortunate as it's some really great content. Suggestions include uh, so making it more solo friendly, uh, lower kudos requirements so players can, more players can participate, uh, minigame chat added, um, increase rewards, and add a 30 second warning if the tunnel is going to collapse early. 
Um, I think this has probably come from one of the team that I'm actually doing Volcanic Mine with now. Um, I've been doing Volcanic Mine for the last week or so with a group of people. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not very friendly for randoms to come in and um, do it. You pretty much need a group of people that are well organized enough to do it. Do we, I'm presuming then it doesn't even have a clan chat in the min, like a mini game chat like other things do. It doesn't, to my knowledge. Um, you That's, guys be up for making one? We can link it into the interface if you do. Sure. So we can give it a chat for people to find teams. The is there is a volcanic mine world, but I don't think there's a lot of people outside it because you need a minimum of four or five. And to do it well, they need to all know what they're doing and work together. As, and Plus, I think at peak times for other parts of the world, it's a, that particular world ain't so good and they find mm -hmm. it hard to find anybody. I think the chat will... May, have, adding a chat will start it, or at least help it somewhat, and then we can look at perhaps addressing it in other ways to see what else we can do. What about making it solo-friendly? I don't know how you would, because, I mean... It's designed to be a team. I think, thing. yeah, yeah it, it was originally designed, and it is soloable, you have to be very good. Very, so it's like one of those things that if you want to solo it, you have to be of like the upper echelon in skill level for that mini game. Yes, Plodio in the chat says they solo it, they are Saradomen. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, right. Be a god. You can solo it easily, apparently. There you go. Anyways, we've straw polled. Should players be able to collect multiple of the same tier uh, reward caskets from Clue Scrolls? And that's at 78%. That's just a Twitch poll, mind you. <laughs> but it seems like something that we might like to offer in an official poll. What do you think? I don't see why they wouldn't like it. Yeah? Yeah, it's a cool idea. As long as we can combat the whole, you know, item thing, which sounds like we can. Why not? Um, I think in the past, when we added the... Um, because there's obviously only one, we never really did... That so mm -hmm. when we when we added the last um, ornament kits, people were storing up their clue scrolls, and then obviously the multiple ways that they can yeah. store clues. So cool. Okay. Um, talk about soloing the new raids. So as we kind of talked about earlier, we're aiming for raids two to be um, ideally done with a, a team of five people at max. Um, we're thinking a team of three will be very efficient at it once you get to the point where you're really, really good at it. Two is going to be stupidly difficult. Um, four, might, four might even be the sweet spot, I don't know. And one we'll have to see depending on the content. Um, we don't want to limit ourselves in terms of gameplay if we have a mechanic that we feel is best fit for this raid to really make it that much better that happens to require two things happening at once, meaning it'd be literally impossible for one person, um, then yeah, we, we don't want to devalue the difficulty, essentially, to allow people to solo it. So just something to keep in mind, but we're getting through the room designs now. Um, We've just recently started work on, on Serafina, so eventually, as I said, we have several of the rooms to work on. As, as we make our way through it, it's something that we're keeping in mind, but we don't have a yes or no right now, if that helps. But again, Deblog, I think you said coming next Wednesday? It should be out. Well, it will be out by Wednesday. It has to be out by Wednesday. So. Okay. <laughs> so in a week, you'll, you'll be able to read all of this stuff and more. You've just challenged Wooks? Well... We'll have to see. Uh, Wooks, we've already said he's going to be here for the playtest, so he's going to help us kind of decide how difficult we want to make everything. So only he can complete it. <laughs> well, he's, he's one of several. I shouldn't say he's, he's not the only one. <laughs> Anyways, um, this has come up again, asking for a house advertising board for 330. So the claim is that um, one person has the power to have so many people auto-typing or chatting, auto-chatting, whatever the thing is in the, in the front of it, advertising their house, that anybody else who's trying to get people into their house um, isn't going to get noticed. So they'd like the ability to have a board to post their name and people could just click join. It's actually on the list of um, backlog suggestions already, last I saw, unless someone's taken it out. Um, unfortunately, being a fairly chunky job to do and... Um not being quite so pressing as a thing to address. It simply hasn't been done um, along with things that have. But it's in the backlog of things we'd like to offer in future and I would be glad to see it. You also spoke at RuneFest about something of the sort for a wider range of activities, I think. Did I? Um, well, I didn't actually attend our talk because I was unavailable for most of, most uh, of the I was talking about the grouping, group finder for Raids 2, which 
I believe you're working on? Uh, yes, although we also spoke about maybe being able to find groups for other minigames and other activities, and house oh. parties would be one of them. Yes, that was tied into content, I believe, um, that we're kind of yet to speak of. Ah. So I don't know what I can say about that at the moment, but yeah. It was a concept that's come up from time to time over the yeah. years. Yeah. The thing with the PRH thing is that it is really handy, the fact that you can, you'll be, you'll be able to click it and see a list or whatever, but that still isn't going to stop people outside with multiple accounts, auto-chatting, which inevitably you're going to run to the portal, and if you see someone's name pop up that's got an open house, you're just going to jump into that rather than going over to something, then clicking it and then doing that and then going in, unless you could auto-join from the board by clicking on it and things like that. Um, people are giving money to the stream. Look at that. There's so many bits coming oh, in. Cheers. Crazy. Um, okay. That doesn't go to us, but that shouldn't stop you from donating. It, it all goes to charity. <laughs> they, that might actually be... That sounded very selfish. <laughs> <laughs> um, donations, subs. I don't think we have donations available, but subs and bits are enabled by Twitch. And um, we wanted emotes on the chat, and we also wanted to give back to charity. So anything that you guys give, is that's where it's going. Unfortunately, my face is one of the emotes. Unlucky. Um, Ash, you got one as well? I do believe I have. Somebody in the chat will type it in. There it is. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> and Kieran. Too. Has anyone got the and Archie Kieran, one? Um, and we have a move on. There you go. We have a noob. Hey. Oh, there we go. Um, Frogger. And we have, yeah, we have the new Frogger one. Frogger's is the best emote on Twitch. Let's see it. Somebody is in the chat. Is that because you helped design it? Well, I didn't. It was a uh, Mod Roy messaged it to me one day and was like, there please convince Mod Stone to put this on Twitch. So I was like, okay, cool, let's do it. And then. Stone was like, all right, it needs to be a bit better. The eyes need to be bigger. So I did it on paint, <laughs> made some new eyes, and then was like, right, do this do this properly, and we've got it. And then before you knew it, we, we've got it. And several people just subbed in that conversation. Yeah, because um, OSRS Froggers. We, we appreciate it, guys. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's going to go quite nicely from this. I don't think we're going to get to the point where we start shouting out people and acknowledging people um, to interrupt the flow of the stream. Um, just know that we we really do appreciate it. And any time that anybody subs in the chat, um, viewers, feel free to add that guy and say thank you because it's all going to a good cause. Yeah. So thank you. In the meantime, you can smash that follow button. <laughs> and Are you a full-time YouTuber? Hit the subscribe if you want to donate to charity. <laughs> and leave a comment. If, uh, follow Instagram, All right. Um, okay, so to, to talk really quickly about um, the thing that Ash and I were just speaking of, um, I just remember we can talk about it. It's not anything secret. It was the um, the LGF looking for group, L LFG, looking for group finder thing, um, something that, that many other games have um, through things like rating or other activities. Essentially what you would be able to do is it's a universal board that everybody in the entire game, depending on the world, would be able to, to, to access, and they'd be able to post saying, I'm 112 combat uh, with this gear set up, and I'm looking for somebody similar to do some bandos with me. And then you'd find somebody else who's doing something similar. You would group up, and you'd be able to join each other in a friend's chat, and then there you go, you, you get to go. Um, it would work for any content that you want, so Raids 2, um, Cast Wars, um, depending on the combat level, maybe skilling activities, uh, maybe PKing if you're feeling trustworthy, but that was the idea. They want to know if there's an LFGF as well. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, pro probably not. Well, you started off with LGF, so... <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, Liquefied flammable gas. Looking for a girlfriend, there you go. Okay, that was the thought anyways, so there you go. Moving on. Um, Jack says, is there an update on the proposed Grotesque Guardian buff slash rework? Is it still happening? So I spoke to Mod Kieran earlier to, uh, before going live, and he actually had the thought of asking, um, what about making granite dust tradable? So I thought I'd bring that to the stream and see what you guys think. Should we pull it? Uh, and, and also related to the question, yes, it is still something that, that we're working on, but uh, no, um, no date. So granite dust being tradable. Chat, how do you feel about that? Uh, I think that's no. Oh, it's more than those than yeses, that's for sure. It needs more than that? Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not saying this would be the only thing. Yeah, I remember we were saying we were always up for, like, always open to changing it, but I think when it initially went out, it was said that the granite dust would be tradable. Um, you know, like when we do these dev blogs before we poll them so we get feedback. Mm -hmm. And then it turned into actually we don't want them to be tradable and we want it to be untradable. So it was polled as being untradable. And that's probably why there's a lot of, like, you know, negative sentiment towards changing that. 
which I completely get, but then at the same time, you know, we're open to changing it if you guys want to, and if you don't, then that's cool as well. We'll do something else. Yeah, plenty of news. Um, we're quickly running out of time now. We did start a little bit late, so that's okay. Also, it's snowing a lot, and I don't want to drive home, so we're going to stay here for a minute longer. Um, let's, the world let's... will still be out there, you know, whenever you do leave the building. It won't sadly go away. Right. You kind minutes. of hope that the sun comes back out at 6 p.m., <laughs> which doesn't happen in the U.K. If you stay long enough, you'll get dinner as well. Yeah, that's true. To be fair, if, you did stay, if you did stay long enough, eventually the sun would come back, but it would be tomorrow. Uh, we that, we did it, that with Game Blast. I left at 6 a.m. Did you stay <laughs> the full thing? Yeah, I ended up being awake 38 hours for Game Blast. Wow. Damn. It was earlier than 6 a.m., I'm sure. I, I left at 6. I, yeah, I woke up. At, <laughs> excuse me. Trying to devalue my 6 a.m. staying up till completion. I ended we stayed up, here till the end, didn't we? Yeah, I ended up waking up at 6.30 in the morning of Game Blast Day on Friday, and I went to bed at 8 p.m. What? The uh, yeah. following. That's just poor sleep stuff. management. I had a terrible. I then did sleep for 15 hours. Right. Um, anyways, we're running out of time. We still have questions. Amazing. We're going to try to quick fire through some of these. Let's let's try to keep the answers uh, concise at least. Anyways, Karamja gloves are getting a nice update. Why doesn't the same update happen for their other diary items to keep full consistency, being the Artie cloak and Mauritania legs? They can. I think it just comes down to time, and we've already done like a hell of a lot of stuff within Qual month as it is, um, and just adding more of that on it's just obviously just more time and things that we just can't do everything at once is this the um, uh, the number of ops i think some of those yeah i think some of they? them are limited by how many options are available uh but the ones that are possible they'll added onto a suggestion list which we've spoke about a few times now that i'll be managing going forward um and whenever there comes an opportunity for quality of life going forward we'll you know sneak in the odd poll here or there uh, and get stuff done in between major content releases um, nice you guys look like a good and a bad guy like, <laughs> you could totally be a bad Dragon Ball Z guy. Orange and purple and opposites. Yeah. Um, all right, another another quick fire then. Can the five-year museum found in Faldor be moved to v the Verok Museum after the event is over? It's too beautiful to delete. I think we've confirmed we're keeping it, and we don't really mind where the entrance is, so long as it doesn't take up so much of the Faldor party room's yep. floor space in future. Nice. Actually, but we're keeping it. space in the basement, don't we, at the moment? Or was that intended for something else? Uh, it was just the tease of what we're working on now. Okay. The Verrock Museum basement, we said in one of the blogs late last year that Maz has a design for a boss you'll be um, building and fighting down there to give your rare fossils a use. Yeah. Um, mm. But there's plenty of other space. Yeah. And, you know, if it took up less of the Faldor party room's floor space on the surface, it wouldn't really be the end of the world if it stayed where it is. Yeah. The players already have it. Integrate a fireplace into the wall as opposed to being another yeah. layer. Or it could, just, it could just into the staircase down. Well, that display yeah. bit with Tim and Crunchy could go into the yeah, retro exactly. museum. Yeah. And Maz, I think, was talking about how the spiral staircases that go up for the party room could also go down to whatever's below the party room. By the good. way, we're keeping it where we put it. I'm sure the players would love to tell us where to put it. <laughs> Let's, let's save the hot topic in the chat for after we jump back to Mod Ghost. But the last one I'm going to give you right now is... When you cast Vengeance and then Hot Worlds or Log Out, you are not um, affected by it anymore. You have to recast it when you log back in, but you still have to wait the 30 seconds before you can cast it again. <laughs> can this be fixed? That's just mean, yes. Oh, nice. Um, all right, let's, let's head... Question What's about up? that, does that mean that they could not venge themselves, take the attack, Hot World, Hot Back quickly venge themselves they can't hop in combat you'd be well that depends it depends what they're fighting against if it's an npc that they use vengeance against and stuff well if they're getting hit regardless they wouldn't be able to hop there's loads of places you can jump out of a location suddenly you're not being attacked mm. i think so have to wait 10 seconds though, don't you yeah you have to wait 10 seconds the venge won't work unless they hit you and i don't know well, if, we'll, if, we'll look into on, it if, if the countdown persists between hopping worlds or logging out but the effect doesn't, then surely the countdown will still persist, but the effect will also persist, so you won't be able to cast it any more times. It's just that you'll get hit by it. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm being... One correct. of us One of <laughs> yeah. us is being... A, I think I might be being a bit... I'll, 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 I'll take that one this time. And the players say not to do it to venge other because, well, that works a little differently. Uh, right. Anyways, moving on. There's one in the chat somewhere. Um, let's throw things over to Mod Ghost and his progress with the uh, the new Raids 2 boss. Cool. All right, I'll just show you the concept again. For those of you that haven't seen the concept, I'll make it brief so we're running out of time. Uh, here's the concept just here. Uh, here's a bunch of other concepts that could end up being the clothing. 
Um, I've just been working on some more clothing. I'm just going to quickly colour in these polys and I'll zoom out and show you a rough idea of what I've actually managed to accomplish in the last half an hour. Um, so there you go. She's got something that looks kind of like clothes running around her. Um, I'll just zoom in on the face. Face is more or less done. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> face is there. Um, so you can see like the face of her. Um, then I've kind of done her body shape as well, just here. It's alright, you can't hear the door, it's fine, just go for it. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Um, and there you go, she's got the dress around the bottom just there as well. I might just get rid of that bit, we'll see. Um, but you know, it's a work in progress. It's kind of like it without it. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'll post you a few images on Twitter. Um, and uh, when I've done the animations and stuff, I can update you on some more things just there as well. Um, yeah, so come back in maybe two weeks' time to uh, the next design stream. I think that'll be, um, let's just see what, what date that is. Um, February, let's go to March. Yeah, so the next design stream will be uh, Wednesday the 14th of, um, of March. So join us then. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Bye, Ghost. Um, yeah, let's let's give a very <laughs> deserving round of applause. Mod West has just disappeared; he's had to go. Um, yeah, so this design stream, you had what four hours or so to work on that? Yeah, yeah, four hours. Right, and how do you feel with your with your progress in four hours? Um, I'm probably about halfway there with it. I mean, there's still lots to decide upon, um, and of course, these days as well, it goes through like a feedback process. So we speak to um, the leads on the on um, RS3. Um, right. So they can just give us some feedback on how to improve it. So yeah, it's quite a long, drawn-out process these days, and also the animation and rigging is really going to add some sort of style and uh, character to her on top of that. So yeah, there's a little way to go, but I think four hours work is about half a day's work. It's okay. Nice. I I really appreciate. Um, do, do you want to just give some clarification on on why we um, work with the RS3 guys for well, feedback on that stuff? <laughs> I've been an artist on this game for, um, it's coming up to four years now. Um, they've been artists in the industry for 15 years um, at plus, you know. Um, their experience amongst them is probably over, you know, 100 years of experience collectively uh, compared to my four, you know, almost four years of experience. So if they say, can we help you at all? I say, yes, you absolutely can help me at all. Tell me everything you know about how I can improve this. <laughs> That's generally how the industry works in terms of feedback. Yeah, we've, we've got a really great working environment with them, actually. And yeah. uh, I tuned into their, their Q&A yesterday very briefly, and I heard them talking about um, Fossil Island and how they might be inspired by considering some Fossil Island-related yeah. content in their game and that. And um, it was Ooh. just really nice to see, like, you know, you, you have a good mixture of the two. Um, we obviously work really well together. So I'd, I'd also say, like, to address concerns in the chat, um, as artists, although they work on RS3, they can do other art styles. So if they advise me to, to do things with my artwork, generally they consider old school style and give me tips within the parameters of what you guys expect. They don't just say, oh, we wouldn't do that in RuneScape 3, ergo change it to this. Um, that's not how um, they work. Yeah. All right. Um, that being said, guys, that is just about going to conclude our Q&A stream this week. Don't think I missed too much. Again, we had Game Blast, massive su success. Thank you so much. Over 100,000 pounds donated to charity. Such a great cause. And apart from that, we'll see you next week. Bye. Hello, I'm Matt Kay. I'm the product manager of Old School Runescape. I'm Mod Ash and I'm a principal content developer. My name is Mod Rock. I am a QA analyst for Old School RuneScape. Hi, I'm Mod John C and I'm a producer for Old School and Old School Mobile. And I'm Mod Sween and I'm the community manager for Old School RuneScape. I'm Mod Kieran, I'm a senior content developer for Old School RuneScape. My name's Gareth, also known as Mod Ghost. I work as a senior artist on Old School RuneScape. I think my favourite moment over the last five years has been back in 2014 when I was writing bank tabs for Old School. You see, it's a feature that the other RuneScape already had, but through you know, years of playing that version of RuneScape and some hindsight, I was able to design the Old School ones quite differently, and um, we got some features in there that Old School players were very happy about.
My favorite moment in Old School so far has to be when we launched Free to Play. Uh, just seeing that rush of new accounts come in, people not knowing what to do, like the whole community got involved. Pure nostalgia rush, it, it really hit me and that day was just one of the best. My favorite thing in Old School over the last five years has to be the release of Raids. Um, it's just amazing to see players' interaction with it. Just has to be the release of the Inferno. So for me, uh, my favourite thing about working on Old School RuneScape is seeing um, how far we've come in the time that we've actually been working on the product together. Favourite moment in Old School's history probably is the poll announcing Old School's release and then the subsequent release of it. Has to be the last Dead Man tournament. It's been two and a half years we've been working on trying to get it to a really good place and the last tournament, I think the players will agree, was absolutely fantastic. I'm particularly proud of the music track called Coil. It's played in the Zora boss fight. I wrote that back in the Christmas of 2014 for the um, Zora launch and um, I'm very proud of how that went down. The thing I'm most proud about working on Old School RuneScape um, is developing the art style as the, as the years have gone by. Um, when we first started on the game everything um, was quite busy and didn't really kind of suit what the engine could do. But by simplifying things and uh, looking at much more broader shape, language and stronger silhouettes, we've actually been able to develop something that looks like it's almost intentional for the engine, as opposed to something that's trying to be something that it can never be. So I want to say that the thing I'm most proud of is Old School Mobile, but we're not finished yet. So I'm actually going to say Achievement Diaries. We had a bit of a wobbly release, but you know, once that was done, we had 10 Achievement Diaries in the game all at once. And they're such great content, they add so much to the game and give every player something to strive for. One thing that I've, I've worked on, which I'm quite proud of, was Zaya. I did a lot of the design for that, a lot of the, the mapping for it as well, so designing the map rather than doing the mapping itself. Um, and how that came out, I mean, it needed a lot of work to get it to a much better place, but I was really pleased that something I had done got into game and players, players played it. The thing that I'm probably most proud on was I had the fortunate ability to work on Raids and the Inferno, two of the hardest pieces of content that have ever come into this game. Um, are absolutely amazing from a technical standpoint as well as a player's one. In January 2014, when I took the job here, I was ranked four on the high scores in old school. When I was younger, um, at school, I was forced by my parents uh, to enter the Queen Mother's handwriting competition. And uh, they were so uh, rigorous about how well I could handwrite uh, that I ended up winning that six years in a row. In my spare time, I do accountancy services for local charities. Something you might not know about me was that before I came to Jagex, my job was importing forklift trucks from China. One thing that the community doesn't know about me, well, I've got a sick life pro tip for you, because all of my socks are the same kind. Now, you might be thinking, why? Why would he say that on camera? But just think, all those times you spent doing laundry, where you have to pair all those socks together, combine them, stick them in your drawer, nightmare. I can just get a pile of socks, stick them in my drawer, and each day take two out. It's wonderful. So, not Jagex related, not RuneScape related, I'm an FA certified goalkeeping coach. More cool content, making more players even happier. In 2023, I would love to see us hosting esports events at like football stadiums like Wembley. We're going around the world hosting like RuneFest style events in every major country. We've got, we're on mobile and we're huge. We continue to grow. The community is still making all our decisions and maybe we're on console as well. What I want to see in the next five years of old school is the game to continue to grow and grow. We'll keep adding on cool content and I want to make sure the community stays at the heart of everything we do. In the years to come, I hope that the old school team continues to work well together and we improve our productivity and our output and we continue to deliver the product that our players want. I'd like to see much more integration with the players as well so they have a much bigger say on what we do and maybe even start creating their own content themselves which we can then help incorporate into game. In terms of content I want more challenging PVM stuff, I want better raids which with the Theatre of Blood coming now or soon that should be a good introduction to that and I want to see clans given the love they deserve. We've built a good game in the last five years so the next five years should be spent building communities. Now, I've had a great time in RuneScape in the last five years. I know a load of you have as well. The next five years, we're going to have a wonderful journey together. There's so much more to come, so much more fun to be had. I'll see you there. Um, one thing I would like to say to the community is just thank you for being you. Um, we are one huge, big, slightly at times dysfunctional family, 
but I think that's what makes old school great. I would like to say to the community, thank you. We wouldn't be here without you. You are truly at the heart of everything we do. And please stay awesome, stay with us, and we'll do the, everything we can to make the game the best it can be for you guys. Okay, I was just asked if I wanted to say anything to the community. So what I'd like to say to you, I'm not really allowed to say, because uh, it's a bit explicit, I guess. Just be mindful that Behind the Gold Crown is a person who loves the game just as much as you do. We want to make the game enjoyable for you. Treat everybody else with respect, players, staff alike. We couldn't have done the last five years without you, and we're looking forward to working with you for the next five years. The one thing I'd like to say to the community is thank you. You guys have made it possible for me to do this job, and I'm so humbled to see the different responses that you guys make to content that we produce. Uh, if I could say anything to the old school community, it would be that it's been a pleasure working with you, and as well as that with you too, on uh, social media and design streams. Uh, you've given me feedback, which I've been able to implement, and shape the game into something that you actually want. And um, I hope to continue to work with you over the coming years to do just that. I think I'd like to say to the players, thank you. You've given me opportunities here that I could never have imagined. And I'm very, very grateful. And I'm having a lovely time. Boo, 